Hello and welcome, I'm Cynthia Miller and today we're going to paint my salty old Stellar J. And um, he just looks like he's been around for a while so I thought he'd, I'd call him old salty. And I use table salt to make this. So um, we've got masking fluid on three or four upward strokes on the forehead. Um, you know, the, the, the style of this bird, he's got a, a comb and so um, there's a little bit of um, upward motion here uh, in the forehead. It's not just a round cap. So if you can um, put on the, the masking fluid just so that we can have some white uh, edges when we take that um, to the finishing point here. And if you haven't used masking fluid before, you can uh, follow the introduction to watercolor I have. We'll uh, talk on that a little bit. But I'm just finishing up a few little last minute um, drawing, sketching of, of the, the template. I wanted to, to show it with a little bit of a beard. And I have to credit Louise de Massey in, in this uh, exercise because I watched her video and she inspired me. So I'm using Payne's Gray here. I've uh, really watered it down. The masking fluid is dry and we're starting at the top and working our way down. Payne's Gray can go anywhere from a very light gray to a very dark uh, black like color and so uh, a lot of this bird is gray so um, the Payne's Gray I use it quite quite exclusively and so I'm just you know sort of dotting in making those upward strokes of the head so it looks like there's there's feathers along the, the outside edge it's certainly not going to be um, you know a, like I said a smooth cap or anything um, I use my brush to make tiny little brush marks uh, along the um, along the sides of the head and as you can see I'm, I'm um, I've got the, the a little bit of a beard on this one, and I kind of like that idea. Again, that was uh, Louise's uh, template. Now you can see I'm I'm throwing in a bit of s table salt here. Now my table salt is the Himalayan. Uh, you can sort of the, see the pink of it, but I've just put it around the neck because I wanted it to just be a little bit of a, a different uh, texture, and um, I'm just bringing that gray down now. Um, and uh, I actually put in a, a couple dabs of little bit of burnt umber there as well to sort of give it a little bit of um, not really muddy but just not a clean gray um, and you can sort of see the the salt as it sits uh, around the neck and then I'm going to um, make sure that I have lots of liquid or sorry moist moisture on the paper and then I, I sprinkle in a little bit more salt and so this is just like I said coarse table salt uh, I use the Himalayan salt and um, it just gives it such a nice texture. So I've got it around the neck, I've got a little bit of a beard on him and and I've placed the salt on the chest feathers. So then there's a bit of a, a texture. Now I'm just going in with another layer of the, the Payne's Grey to give it a little bit more um, darkness I guess is what you might call it. And I've mixed a little bit of, um, it's a, just a no-name mauve. So sort of a purpley, very light purple color. And I've, I've colored the top part of the beak in that mauve color. And it just sort of gives it a little bit of um, a different look to it because the bottom of the beak is painted black after everything is dry there. I'm painting the beak there. And as you can see, I've painted black around the eyes as well. And, you know, by all... Um, measures the the whole bird is actually quite a bit more black than what this this came out I just couldn't seem to get enough pigment on my brush or something but um, I, I still like the way he turns out because you know the birds they just have so much personality when you start painting the eyes and and the little feathers and um, giving them different colors and different perches and and that sort of thing so I, I really love um, painting this one and I actually painted a whole family of, of Stellar Jays the week that I painted him. So I've got the mama bird, the papa bird, and the two baby birds. They sort of look like teenager birds. It's, it's sort of fun. Um, and yeah, like the other, um, another couple of uh, strokes to the, the upper part of the the head with feathers and, and just working around the eyes. You want to make sure that you've got a pupil there and um, a little bit of a white spot in the center. 
um, you know, just, just work away at it um, and have a few little, as I mentioned, strokes of feathers moving um, all around the head. And, you know, you can make this a little more simple than, than what I've done. I've, I've really added quite a lot of um, sort of interesting features to these birds that I do. But that's the fun in it, I think. So I'm going to take it to a hair dryer and get this dried. And what you do is just hold the hair dryer up just a warm temperature, about uh, four to six inches above, and just just hold it there until it dries. And, and then you're ready to go. And um, these next colors then that, that I put in are the phthalo blue and a mix of the Payne's gray. And this is where the, the blue really starts to come through. I've you want to sort of blend the, the gray and the top of the bird down to the blue of the, the more feathers. And then the finishing touch, of course, is the black marks on the wings. But we'll do that after we get this blue on here. So it, it can be a deep blue. It can be a, a lighter blue. I think the, the birds in the, uh, the blue birds in the east are more um, all one color. The ones in the west are, there's quite a bit of dark gray and black on them. Um, and as I mentioned, I, I probably could have put a little bit more of the, the black into the, the color of this one. But I love the way the blue starts to come together. When, when you've got your blue mixed up, you can have, as I mentioned, the lighter, the, the darker um, sort of shades of blue. Um, they really bring out then the rest of the feathers because you've got a, a lot of different kinds of feathers here. You've got the wing feathers. Um, as I mentioned, you've got a few little bird, um, beard, bearded feathers. Um, the chest and the back are completely different. The, the front is a little bit um, sort of mottled in this, in this particular one. And uh, I, as I mentioned, I just sort of think that this is an older bird is, is how it turned out. So it's the old, the, the father of the the family. But as you can see, he's got beautiful bl blue feathers. And I've actually found feathers from the Blue Jays in our neighborhood. We get to watch these squawky birds in our neighborhood and, and they're just so beautiful. It's, they're actually a very deep, deep blue color. So I'm just going to add a little bit more pigment to these feathers. They're still wet, so it blends really nicely. And I'm just, you know, focusing on one set of feathers at a time. So there's the wing feathers. And then you've got a little bit of a, a different type of feather on the lower part of the body. Um, it's a little bit more fluffy. And then of course, where the legs uh, meet the body, then um, there's actually more fluffy sort of down feathers there. So that's what I'm trying to um, sort of create that, that look where uh, different areas of the, the bird's body and the feathers are actually different kinds of feathers and they lay different, they um, have a different uh, color and tone and um, you know of course the wing feathers those are the ones that uh, are very functional and then of course the tail feathers are straight down at the uh, at the tail so um, until I uh, watched Louise's video I wasn't really aware of all these different um, sort of parts of the the different types of feathers and and I, I just love the way that this came together because I watched that video and I hope that um, you're able to sort of uh, grasp that that same concept that the um, you know the different parts of the the bird have different types of feathers and so your strokes are going to just continue to be up and down I've put quite a bit of, of dark on the the chest of the bird and the back of the bird. You can see the salt is, is giving it some texture. And um, and there I'm working on the, so I'm working on the, the lower part of the body now where there is down feathers um, just above the legs. And I think just little dabs of paint in there to make it look like it's modeled, like it's got some texture to it. It's just um, easier to do that with wet paper too, I think. So it sort of blends. So just take your time. Um, when you're mixing up your blue, 
um, you know, you don't need a whole lot, but you do want to keep that shade of blue the same throughout um, with different, you know, variations with the gray and, and, and the white, of course. So um, just giving him some texture there on, on his tummy. I'm starting to draw in the individual feathers there now on the, the back. They sort of interconnect in the center of the back. And then the wing feathers are definitely individual there. And of course, every layer that we add on there, the, the blue is a little bit more vibrant. So again, this is the mix of the thalo blue. And you could use cobalt blue if that's all you have. Um, I love my indigo blue. Um, doesn't necessarily have to be exactly the blue that is that is in nature. And here you can see I'm putting the little black marks on the tops of the the wing feathers. They seem to only be on the lo the upper part of of the the feathers. And they go straight across the feather. As you know, the feathers sort of, you know, the little twills of them go in a, a slant, but these black marks go straight across. And so it's sort of challenging to make it look like the feather is on a slant, but yet these black marks go straight across. So uh, just take your time, put them on very light at first, and then you can... Um, you know, just gauge how you want it to be. Now here I've I've sort of changed the design. I, I decided to um, put the bird on a little bit on a different angle. So I'm redrawing the, the tail feather. It just didn't look right to me. And I decided instead of putting him on a branch, I'm going to have him sit on a little bit of grass. And uh, we've got lots of golden colored grass st still around here. So it's not unusual for them to sit right in the, the garden and, and um, where that golden color is. So I thought that's that's what I'll do. It just seemed a, a little bit more, um, more it, they just sort of needed to be grounded, I think, is what, it, what I felt. But um, a little bit of gray around that fur there, right where the, the feet are. And... Um, just letting those tail feathers dry a little bit before I add some more. But basically the, the black I'm putting on now, those are the little black marks right on the feathers that go straight across. And so you want them to be fairly dark, but you don't want your eye to go to them first. So it's all a matter of blending in that, that darker paint with the, with the blue. Here I'm doing the same on the, the tail feathers. Adding a little bit more blue here. Now between the body and the tail feathers, it is going to be a little bit darker. That's where the, the feet are. That's where the, you know, the tail feathers come down. Decided to start over again there. And that's what you have to do. You sort of have to play with it to, to get those right angles. And so I didn't like the first one, so I did put some water on there and, and start again. And you can do that with watercolor as long as you're doing that right away, right? As you can see, I sort of did some negative painting there, darker underneath. 
So I'm just working on um, bringing some more sort of uh, deeper shades to underneath the the wings, underneath the where the legs are, and here I am again trying to get those black marks to look the way that I want them to. And you know, as I mentioned, you just sort of have to do your best to to make that look like those wings are laying the way you want them to look uh, with those black marks on them. And I did play around with that quite a lot. Now I, I mixed in a bit of the, the burnt umber into the Payne's Gray to get the color of the feet and I decided to have him sit right on the ground and um, you know so then I have to draw out the feet otherwise you can put grass around it but I wanted it to be um, I want the feet to look like they are um, you know part of it I mean they, they do they are a big bird they have big feet and uh, I wanted it to look like it was definitely settled on the ground so um, just filling in those you know just sort of um, you think of a, a poultry bird the legs that that you might see on the bird um, they're sort of grisly looking they've got sort of bumps on them uh, they've got claws on both uh, ends of the claws of the uh, sort of talons I guess is what you call them and so I'm just trying to make it look as realistic as I can with those feet and here I'm at a little bit more uh, darkness to those marks on the wings you know looking at pictures of the stellar jays in my Audubon book they they really do have beautiful black markings so I want them to to stand out on the blue I think in retrospect the the blue could have probably been a little bit deeper color but then you really do lose the black in the blue and um, I wanted it to to stand out as much as as uh, we could I mean you, you never really know until you start painting what a what a um, artwork is going to look like and I'm, I'm quite happy with the way this this turned out so I'm just mixing up some burnt umber and yellow ochre here and I'm just going to be very loose in the way that I put the grass and the ground around the bottom of the, the feet um, so that it, he looks like he's sitting in a patch of, of grass and and you know a lot of times I I don't use strokes I use just sort of dabbing the the paint in there I'm, I'm using a little bit bigger brush here I believe this is um, six or eight um, because I, I'm covering more more ground right I'm covering more of the area of the paper and so I'm just using different shades of the the yellow and the the brown tones to bring that in make it look like there's there's some grass there and I don't make it very difficult at all it's very simple and then I, what I'm doing is uh, you know just sort of using the the yellows the browns and I'll start to uh, sort of work on short grass and as I move through the the rest of the design of the grass it, it gets a little bit lighter a little bit longer and um, you'll see this as I as I start to put that in so I'm just um, having a look at it and getting my my colors ready and again just starting with shorter and then it moves into longer just to give it look that look that you know there's something else there in the picture and you could put a background on this if you want I prefer to leave this white I think the the beard stands out nicely on the white I like the, the contrast of the colors of the bird and the, and the grass and um, just putting lots of yellow in that grass to make it look like it's the fall. These stellars are around a lot of the time of the year but mostly in the fall and into the winter I find. So um, yeah I hope you've enjoyed that. My old salty stellar jay. Um, and again you don't have to make him look salty. You can make him look black. Have fun.